I remember, you know, there was a time in my life, um, it was a long time ago now, uh, after I graduated from grad school and a number of stress factors and disappointments kind of converged in a way that I, uh, I, I entered into a time, the only thing I can call it is clinical depression for a number of months. And, and I was new to that kind of struggle. You know, I just didn't, I didn't do that. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm a pastor, I help other people, but I, that doesn't happen to me. Like, I don't struggle like that way. Sure, and, yeah. Well, the wheels were off. Like I, it was uh, deep enough and long enough that I realized that this is something I, I need help with, you know, mm-hmm. but, but that can be really hard to know just that self-assessment, especially if it's kind of a new, new phenomenon and it's hard to make an accurate self-assessment of how am I really doing? And is this really that big of a deal? And what do I do with these feelings? Um, because, you know, we might know that we're not quite right. Maybe we're a little bit more anxious than normal. Uh, stomach is a little messed up in some weird ways, or, you know, we're uh, having trouble sleeping. We are more angry than normal, uh, more irritable, uh, feeling sad in ways that we didn't normally do that. So we're feeling these things we're not used to feeling, but don't really know how big of a deal, don't know what to do with them, don't know how to make them go away. And if there's anybody watching that was like I was in the, in the first part of that, and that I occasionally still am, um, what would you suggest would be kind of that next step if you, okay, I know something's not right. I don't know how big a deal this is. I don't like the way I'm feeling. I don't know how to make it go away. Uh, what would you say to them? Hey, what, what are some healthy steps you could take if that's, if that's where you're at toward mental health? Yeah. Thanks for sharing that story first, by the way. I, I know you've shared that before. And I think it's, it's an important one to, to, to share just to normalize it for a lot of people. I mean, everyone deals with it in some way at some point in time. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I think even the way you describe that, even as a pastor, I would even say as a therapist, it's important for, for everyone, including people who are in helping professions, pastors, therapists alike, um, to be able to reach out to other people to get a kind of a, uh, an objective perspective, if you will, because it's really easy to what, what I call go nose deaf. Like when you know how like in nose deaf, you kind of like, you just get used to a smell after a while. It just becomes part yeah. of like life and you kind of don't even notice it because it's your life, right? You just kind of get used to it, right? And I think that's how it works for mental health. I, I think that we just get used to the way things work. We get used to the way work goes, the way that our relationships are, the way life is. And uh, it can gradually turn into something very different very different than what we originally had hoped for. And, and, and so it helps to have someone come in and just say, hey, let's take a look and see what's going on and give a fresh perspective, if you will. So I think that's really important for us to be able to know it's normal for people to, um, to have a hard time seeing that for themselves and to self-assess. Um, and it's always helpful to just get someone else to kind of come in and take a look and say, hey, what's going on? Like, what's, what, do you, what do you see, right? So I would say that's a it's a really important first step. Just be willing to include someone else into that just to get a better perspective. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a, a professional or a pastor or whatever, everyone's going to need that at some point in time. So that's the first thing. Yeah. Um, the second thing I would say would, that would be a good first step or maybe um, a, a, a way to um, really maintain um, good mental health is look for what I would call the check engine lights. You mentioned a couple things in that, like Anger, um, sadness, depression, anxiety. Um, these are these are what I call. Um, they're, they're what in clinical world we call um, primary emotions. They're think of them like primary colors. They're the the, the first and most um, intensive emotions that people will typically feel: anger, fear, and sadness. And and if you think of those as check engine lights, think about it for a car. Like those things are your check engine lights. So if you're looking at your dashboard. And those things come up a little bit more frequently or maybe a little bit more disproportionate. Like I'm feeling a little bit more irritable, a little bit more angry or a little bit more down than normal, or I'm just I'm really anxious about different things. I'm not sure why. Yeah. That would be a good indicator that the check engine light has gone off. And so that's a good first step just to get used to your dashboard, just to be able to know, not actually, not actually do anything about it, 
but to be able to spot it. That's the, that's the first thing, because you can't spot it and you can't do anything about it, right? Um, and then I would say the second thing would be to uh, know how to just begin to start diagnosing and processing some of those things, moving from primary emotions to where are called, I would say, secondary emotions, where you're thinking, okay, it has more to do with um, loss of some sort, or maybe uh, rejection, or feelings of inadequacy. Um, there are much more nuanced ways to define what's going on, but it takes time. Like as if you were to say, okay, check engine light's gone off, let's pull over for a second, let's pop the hood and let's see what's going on, right? And that would be a, another good step. And if that doesn't work, if you don't have those kind of tools, then definitely talking with a professional can help equip you with some of those things to figure out how do I process some of those things? How do I self-diagnose and, and work through some of those things as I pop the hood? Um, but yeah, that would be probably the, the, the third step I would say is talk with a professional. Uh, it doesn't have to be that there's anything really big going on. It could be just, yeah, like to use a car analogy, just go in for a tune-up. Just go and talk to a mechanic and say, hey, what's going on? It may be nothing. It may be something. But it'll be yeah. worth talking to someone to be able to figure out, hey, is there more to this than meets the eye? And probably like.